Toho, a new world arrives on the Nintendo Switch and this one, it's an English translation of a fan-made game which promises to combine bullet hell combat with action RPG mechanics, but can it get this balance right? Well that is what I'm here to find out. My name's Alex, so this is Switch Corner, and if you do enjoy the video today, consider subscribing, it helps us out a huge amount. Story then and transparently, I don't know a huge amount about Toho outside of it's got a massive following and that it started its life as a bullet hell shoot 'em up, something it somewhat promises to embody here or at least that bullet hell element. Now thankfully, that said, the story is simple enough for anyone to pick up, no matter your experience with the series. And the basic idea here is, we take on the role of a mage and we live within the human world in a land known as Gensokyo, no doubt a name I'm pronouncing, or at least should I say butchering. This town though is protected from a humankind by a mystical barrier, meaning they know nothing of its existence. Well of course that is only for so long, in fact just the opening few minutes of the game when a chance encounter between our leader mage and a human girl ends up with her inside the city walls. We of course want to get them home but it seems there's evil at play here and this chance encounter it has led to potential disaster for all. Now we must work together and get to the bottom of who threatens our world and who is behind it. The story is fine, the team's passion for the series is clear with frequent moments of dialogue and I definitely enjoyed getting to know these characters. Gameplay then, as I mentioned, this is Bullet Howler Combat meets Action RPG and it's presented in a third person perspective, though the camera does change its angle frequently, meaning it's not always directly behind the character. We also get to choose between two mages at the opening of the game and while the controls do remain the same for both, they do possess unique moves which had me experimenting very briefly with a quick jump into the tutorial for each. The gameplay honestly couldn't be easier, we can jump with the B button, attack with the remaining face buttons though many of these moves do have a cool down timer and we can also use the triggers as well for some special attacks. We can also then sprint by holding down the A button. We can also as well block with the right trigger and if it is timed right it's almost a parry effect where we get a few seconds of slow motion to unleash hell on our foes. This can only be used as a warning against melee attacks and not against any form of bullets. It almost gave me a Fiber Fury in many ways, you know, we typically traverse a location facing some basic I guess enemies before standing off against a boss encounter that combines melee with ranged bullet hell. Now I know that term bullet hell is typically associated with ultra difficult, but I do want to point out here this game is relatively easy throughout. You know when you do die it's simply more a case of learning the patterns than they actually overwhelmed you. This is a big problem for the game honestly, but first of all, I do want to reference the controls here. Your only dodge maneuver is to jump and there's no invincibility frames at all, so they couldn't go too crazy with the number of projectiles heading your way and that is disappointing. This game would have hugely benefited from some sort of dodge mechanic or you know, dash move. Thankfully though, your attacks are entertaining and like the bosses, they come in a variety of ranged and melee. Now, I do want to point out here, the action RPG elements, I do like the overall idea. You know, we can modify our lead a minimal amount, including the moves attached to face buttons. We can change our weapon, clothing, even one piece of jewelry which acts as a buffer. We can also level up a number of character stats with collectibles found in the game, though this doesn't open up until we are a few missions deep. This includes things like increasing our health, adding health regens. Also, we can do things such as increase our strength, even as far as, let's say, the number of items our enemies drop. Sadly though, the game's simply too easy that you won't need to pay all of that much attention to these action RPG elements because in my playthrough I rarely switched equipment and I absolutely did not change moves because they level up individually as you use them so why would I lower my overall power to try something new? It comes off as a nice idea that's sadly not at all unnecessary and poorly implemented. I just occasionally basically switched weapons and added to my strength and health, ignoring pretty much everything else in the options. 
The level design is also quite weak as well. We typically need to crawl through a dungeon battling enemies on the way before we would reach the boss encounter, but these designs, they are lackluster for the locations, just bland repetitive corridors for the most part, and an over-reliance on trapping you in specific areas with barriers till you kill all in sight. Basically, then you need to find a switch that can remove some sort of blockade that will be standing in your path. They needed more creativity here to really have you excited for what came next and occasionally it does shine through, it's just not often enough, it rarely lasts more than a few minutes. A great example of this creativity would be the game every so often embraces the idea of being a 3D platformer and it feels old school thanks to the limited moveset but I really enjoyed these moments, they put some weight on my ability and distracted me from simply sprinting past enemies I weren't forced to fight. I should add here as well, yes each location has a recommended level, but I was always behind and it really didn't hinder me at all. Fortunately the locations they might be repetitive in design as well, but I will add here the game at least takes you to some unique areas visually and you'll get to see a whole lot of this location. Outside of the main story then we do get optional side missions and I did a couple of them and these were extremely simplistic, mostly collector funds that had us revisiting previously seen areas. Sadly the location design being quite dull though really didn't kind of tempt me back in. I gave up on them pretty much immediately because I didn't need the leveling up and I had more than enough in-game cash so really what was the point? If you're wondering about cash as well you can buy and sell items at a store which I did occasionally and then the world it is presented from a top down almost perspective that you can freely explore between missions which I did like it gave me kind of old school Mario vibes almost with free control over movements. Overall I think the idea is good but the action RPG elements here feel somewhat unnecessary thanks to that forgiving difficulty level and the level design itself a little repetitive in layout and the required steps just basically repeat constantly. The boss encounters are the highlight however as they really do flex some unique movesets and they completely outdo the grunts that fill the majority of corridors. Visually then it's not a great looking game but I will admit the old school almost style has its charm. The locations are extremely basic with little in the way of freedom outside of branching pathways but there's at least some variety in the design itself. Characters also look good and I was particularly impressed with the different attack patterns. You know, they embrace a vivid colour palette which works really well when you have to navigate these somewhat, I guess, complex bullet patterns. By far the biggest highlight though is the character models during discussions. We have 2D characters and they look absolutely fantastic. Problems? Occasionally, I will say some enemies can blur in a little too much to the environment and also some items in the environment such as trees, they can block your view but I do think generally overall it is decent stuff. Audio finally, and this is so strange, no doubt a reflection of the low budget they were working with honestly, but the music, some really nice catchy pieces in here that often dial up that intensity and it's so good, honestly I'd probably listen to it offline, but then what it's accompanied with just falls to pieces. Environmental effects are near non-existent outside of a couple of attack sounds, and then there's no voice acting at all and for some reason, frequently when these conversations occur the game goes completely silent, they didn't add any music to many of these dialogue exchanges and I actually thought something was going wrong with my switch and rebooted the game when it occurred the first time. Overall I have no doubt fans will appreciate the effort here, there's a decently sized cast, an entertaining story, an opportunity to visit a number of locations and I will say some decent boss encounters. Sadly however it's let down by boring location design, a difficulty curve that is too forgiving and a whole lot of padding with switches and repetitive required steps. Today for me it's an average 5 out of 10, the effort is clear, they needed to polish off the action and dial up the challenger however, really just to make any of the action RPG elements worth your time. For me I just simply ignored them outside of the occasional equipment switch, that's really a shame because the idea it's definitely good stuff. So will you be checking this one out? Let me know in the comments with that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists daily and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.